What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll explore how Kubernetes complements Docker by providing robust tools to manage containerized applications at scale. To do that, we'll dive into the core concepts of Kubernetes, understand its architecture, and learn how it can help us achieve high availability, fault tolerance, and efficient resource utilization across our applications. Let's begin by discussing life before Kubernetes, a situation many of us might be experiencing right now. You see, in a traditional deployment, we'd be pushing our code to physical servers in a data center, and we'd be managing the operating system and the code that's actually running on each of those servers. Another environment that we may potentially use is to bring code out to virtual machines. VMs provide a way to run multiple instances on a single physical server, each with its own OS and resources isolated from others. This offered flexibility and better resource utilization, but it still had its challenges. Managing VMs involved dealing with significant overhead. Each VM ran a full operating system, leading to substantial resource consumption. Updates and patches to the OS had to be applied individually, and scaling required spinning up new VMs, which could be slow and resource intensive. Moreover, maintaining consistent environments across development, testing, and production was difficult, leading to the infamous it works on my machine problem. As applications grew and the need for rapid, reliable deployments increased, these traditional methods became bottlenecks. This is where containers and Docker came into play. They revolutionized how applications are packaged and deployed. Containers allowed us to bundle applications with their dependencies, ensuring consistency across different environments and significantly reducing overhead compared to VMs. However, even with Docker, managing containers manually at scale was still a daunting task. Ensuring containers were running, scaling them based on demand, handling failovers, and managing network configurations could quickly become unmanageable as the number of containers grew. This complexity called for a more sophisticated solution to orchestrate these containers, and that's where Kubernetes comes in. Kubernetes, often abbreviated as K8, is an open source platform for orchestrating containers. It automates the deployment, scaling, and operation of application containers elevating container management to the next level. Consider Kubernetes as the tool that manages multiple Docker environments. It can actually use other container tools out there, but Docker is just simply the most popular. Kubernetes became the de facto tool for managing large groups of containers. So what are the benefits of Kubernetes? First, scalability. Kubernetes can automatically scale your application up or down based on demand, this ensures optimal performance and resource utilization, allowing us to handle traffic spikes effortlessly. Next is high availability and fault tolerance. Kubernetes ensures our application is highly available and resilient to failures. It can automatically detect and replace failed containers, distribute traffic, and restart containers if necessary. Also, automated deployments and rollbacks. With Kubernetes, we can automate the deployment process, including rolling updates and rollbacks. This means we can deploy new features or fixes with minimal downtime and quickly revert if something goes wrong. Additionally, efficient resource utilization. Kubernetes schedules containers based on their resource requirements and available resources. This ensures efficient use of our infrastructure, reducing costs and improving performance. Finally, consistent environments. By using Kubernetes, we ensure that our development, testing, and production environments are consistent, leading to fewer development issues and better development cycles. Okay, now before delving into the architecture of Kubernetes, some of you may be asking at this point, what is the difference between Kubernetes and Docker Compose? You see, Docker Compose deploys multi-container Docker apps to a single server. It is limited to single host deployments and lacks the advanced orchestration capabilities of Kubernetes. It is suitable for local development and testing, but less suitable for production deployments. On the other hand, Kubernetes is a production-grade container orchestrator that can run multiple container runtimes, including Dockers, across multiple virtual or physical machines. Kubernetes offers built-in service discovery and load balancing mechanisms. It automatically assigns a unique DNS name to each service and distributes traffic across the available instances. However, Docker Compose relies on the Docker networking stack and does not provide native service discovery or load balancing features. Kubernetes has a vast ecosystem and a thriving community. It is supported by major cloud providers and has a rich set of add-ons, tools, and integration available. 
In contrast, Docker Compose, while widely used for local development, has a smaller ecosystem and it is less mature in terms of production-grade deployment features. Okay, let's dig into the final area, which is the actual Kubernetes architecture. To fully understand this section, we need to cover one of Kubernetes's main components, pods. A pod is the smallest and simplest unit in the Kubernetes object model that we can create or deploy. A pod represents a single instance of a running process. A single pod can contain one or more containers, such as Docker containers, that are tightly coupled and share the same network namespace, IP address, and storage volumes. These containers are scheduled together and run on the same host, allowing them to communicate with each other using local host networking. Pods are designed to be ephemeral and disposable. They can be created, destroyed, and replicated dynamically based on the needs of the application. Kubernetes manages pods throughout their life cycle, ensuring that the desired number of instances are running, handling container restarts, and rescheduling in case of failures. You see that Kubernetes architecture is cluster-based, which means that Kubernetes operates using a cluster of machines to manage and orchestrate containerized applications. A cluster in Kubernetes consists of multiple nodes, and each node can run one or more pods. There are two main types of nodes, the Kubernetes master or master node, which controls all activities within the entire Kubernetes infrastructure, and the worker nodes, which are managed by the master. The Kubernetes master, also known as the control plane, is responsible for maintaining the desired state of the cluster, such as which applications are running and their configurations. The master includes four main key components. The API server, this is the entry point for all the administrative tasks in the Kubernetes cluster. It exposes the Kubernetes API, processes REST operations, validates, and executes them. The ETCD, a consistent and highly available key value store used as Kubernetes's backing store for all cluster data, it stores configuration data that can be accessed by each of the nodes in the cluster. The scheduler, this component watches for newly created pods with no assigned node and selects a node for them to run on based on resource availability and other constraints. The controller manager, this runs controller processes that handle routine tasks in the cluster, such as managing applications, ensuring the correct number of pods are running, handling node operations, and more. On the other hand, Kubernetes nodes, also known as worker nodes, are the machines where the actual workloads run. Each node has the necessary services to run pods and is managed by the master. Key components on a node include the Kubelet, an agent that runs on each node in the cluster. It ensures that containers are running in a pod. It communicates with the master to receive commands and reports back on node status. The Kube proxy maintains network rules on nodes. It handles the network routine for traffic going to and from pods, ensuring that communication within the cluster and from external sources is managed efficiently. The container runtime, it's the software responsible for running containers. Docker is the most commonly used container runtime, but Kubernetes also supports other runtimes such as container D and CRIO. Finally, before ending the video, we'd like to cover a few additional concepts behind Kubernetes. First, namespaces. Namespaces provides a way to divide cluster resources between multiple users or teams, offering isolation and helping manage resources efficiently. You see, multiple pods running on different nodes can belong to the same namespace in Kubernetes. Think of a namespace as a logical partitioning mechanism within a cluster that is not tied to the physical infrastructure or the nodes on which the pods run. Next are services. Services in Kubernetes are an abstraction that defines a logical set of pods and a policy by which to access them. Services provide a stable endpoint such as an IP address and a port to access pods that perform the same function regardless of which node they are running on. This abstraction allows clients to reliably connect to the backend pods without needing to know their locations. Now, deployments and replica sets. A replica set ensures that the specified number of replicas or pods of an application are running at any given time across the entire cluster. A deployment provides declarative updates to applications and manages the creation and maintenance of replica sets. And to wrap it up, ingress and networking. Ingress is an API object that manages external access to services within a Kubernetes cluster, typically HTTP and HTTPS. Ingress can provide load balancing, SSL termination, and name-based virtual hosting. Stay tuned for the next videos of the series in which we'll create our first Kubernetes cluster, 
dive deeper and put to use all the information we covered today. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.